All right, let's keep going. The learning goal of this lecture is to learn how to use the boundary conditions to find constants in the general solution to Laplace's equation, okay? Okay, so let's go back to the beginning of the problem. If you guys remember this problem, we had uh, a configuration of plates here, two of them grounded, one of them hot, and that established these particular boundary conditions, okay? So I know that the potential is zero, when y is equal to zero, I know that the potential is zero. When y is equal to a on this plate, I know that the potential is this v naught. When x is equal to zero, and I know the potential goes to zero as x goes to infinity because we're getting far and far from this hot plate, which is at a potential of v naught. Okay. I also know, based on what we did in the last lecture, Okay, that this problem has what would be called a uh, general solution that we found through separation of variables and that general solution looked like this guy. Okay, so basically it's general because we haven't figured out what all these constants are by applying our boundary conditions. Okay, so... Okay, that's our general solution. And now we're gonna apply our boundary conditions and other things we know about the problem to find, okay, all those unknowns, A, B, C, D, and even little k, okay? So the first thing uh, we're gonna do, and I'm gonna scooch this guy to the top of the next slide. Okay, the first thing I want to do is if I go back to my boundary conditions, I've got this boundary condition here for that says that the potential needs to go to zero when x goes to infinity. Okay, so our boundary condition four, which says that v goes to zero as x goes to infinity. If I look here at my general solution, a term is going to screw that up, right? This term here is not going to go to zero as x goes to infinity. In fact, uh, it could get really, really, really big as x goes to infinity. Okay, so that tells me that I need to get rid of that term that basically blows up as uh, x goes to infinity. So that tells me that a needs to be equal to zero. Okay, so this term here doesn't Okay, blow up. Okay, so that helps. I get to get rid of that A term. Okay, I'm going to simplify now by absorbing the constant B. C and D. Basically, I don't know what C and D are anyway, so now if I'm just multiplying this term by this term and this term, it doesn't matter if I combine B and C, that product, and B and D into new constants. Okay, so that's going to simplify my general solution. I'm getting rid of another unknown, or rather I'm absorbing it into some unknowns that I already have. So I'm going to have now two terms, the C times KX times the sine of KY plus D e to the negative kx times the cosine of ky. All right, cool, cool. So now let's go back and look at my boundary conditions. Okay, I've got this y thing. I think about, all right, well, how does the sine function act at different y's? How does the cosine function act at different y's? If I go back here, okay, I know that the potential has to be zero when y is equal to zero. That was my first boundary condition. So my boundary condition one that says that v equals zero, okay, when y equals zero, if I look, that's not consistent with um, this second term here, okay? When y equals zero, the second term is going to be one, okay? So that tells me that d has to be equal to zero, and that's because basically the cosine of zero is equal to one. This other term behaves nicely because the sine of zero is equal to zero, okay? So we're good there, cool. Okay, so now we've simplified even more, 
that's what we're trying to do make this into something manageable now I've just got this guy okay one term I'm not quite done yet my second boundary condition specifies that the voltage has to be equal to zero when y is equal to a okay so looking at this equation here the only way that can happen is if this second term goes to zero when y is equal to a okay uh, i know i know that the sign of n pi is equal to zero where n is an integer okay so based on that i know that if i can uh, i need my k sub y to be equal to some n pi when y is equal to a okay so i can say that k times a should be equal to n times pi and that gives me that k is equal to n pi over a so now that gives me a new potential function we'll write it down one more time i still have this constant c out front but now i know what k is it's got to be n pi divided by a that allows this function to go to zero when y is equal to a all right so the only thing left i need to know is c okay and i'm going to go ahead and let c we'll figure that out in the next lecture okay let's see where we've gotten so far we started out this problem with a charge configuration some grounded plates some hot plates okay we defined a coordinate system we use that to define some boundary conditions that were just basically based on an understanding of what is going on with the charge configuration, okay? Then we started with Laplace's equation and used separation of variables to come up with a general solution, okay? So separation of variables simplified it into two terms that were just two second order ODEs that actually have pretty common solutions, okay? And then we ended up with this general solution and we applied our boundary conditions to rewrite this general solution as something much simpler, okay? We're not done yet. We still have this constant C that we need to figure out. And if you notice, we still have one more boundary condition to employ, but I'm gonna go ahead and leave figuring out that last C, that last constant uh, in the next lecture.